Now, with the amount of political heavyweights in Brisbane, Australia, close to reaching a critical mass, the atmosphere of the G20 summit has been all but business as usual. The spectrum of emotions has been fluctuating from forced social smiles to friendly exchanges of jokes on the sidelines. Barack Obama's infamous chewing gum has been seen once again making an entrance at the gathering, while Britain's David Cameron found his phone more interesting during Tony Abbott's speech. Now, as a matter of fact, the greeting ceremony itself was rather unconventional for an event like this one. As for official developments, Russia's Vladimir Putin wrapped up the morning meeting session with a press conference. RT's Igor Piskanov is in Brisbane and listen in to that conference for us. Igor, thanks for being with us. Now, how did did the final day of the summit start for the Russian leader? Well, President Putin seems to be in quite a positive mood. He uh, said some good words about the summit, saying that it was held in a positive, friendly and productive atmosphere. They did discuss quite a lot of issues from Ebola to the global economy to the falling uh, oil prices and anti-Russian sanctions as well. And according to the Russian leader, there is a general understanding now that they are hurting not only the Russian economy, but all sides, really. There's a general consensus at the G20 that sanctions are hurting all sides, the nations that are imposing the sanctions and the countries on which these restrictions are targeted against. And this position is not only the right one, but the only one that has the right to exist. Now, the president was asked the question if he felt any pressure from his uh, Western partners over the situation uh, in Ukraine. And uh, the question that uh, the answer that Vladimir Putin provided really surprised many uh, journalists because he said the way uh, this whole situation was presented prior to the summit in the light of this sort of Cold War era uh, rhetoric returning and almost uh, the start of the new Third, third War, if, uh, if, uh, if you wish, he was saying that um, that reality completely is opposite to uh, how things were done at the summit. However, certain turbulence in uh, the global security situation still remains, but he said there is a general will to fix things as long as uh, people and as long as states really would uh, uh, follow international rules and not only their national interests. It depends on our partners how the events will unfold. If we adhere to the principles of international law and respect each other's position, the current situation won't last long. In the case that some countries continue solving problems, taking into account only their own interests, it's very hard to make a prognosis on how the situation will develop. Now, even though Putin said that uh, Ukraine was not just discussed at uh, the general meetings, uh, it was, he says, uh, in the focus of uh, pretty much all bilateral meetings. And uh, according to uh, Vladimir Putin, he thinks that uh, now Russia has a better understanding of uh, the position of the West, and the West, in its turn, has uh, a better understanding of uh, Russia's concerns. At the same time, uh, the Russian leader said that there is hope for uh, positive change in that that situation, uh, but at, uh, at the same time he has criticized the latest decision of the, the Ukrainian leader to uh, financially cut off the southeastern uh, parts of the country. President Poroshenko's decree is a de facto economic blockade of eastern Ukraine. This is a big mistake, of course. Even during the conflict in Chechnya, Moscow never cut the region's financing. Kiev is trying to save money by this move, but this is the wrong time and the wrong place to do that. The president was also asked about his relationship with uh, the Australian Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, uh, who prior to the summit uh, made uh, global headlines and actually raised a lot of eyebrows both here in Australia and abroad by threatening to shirt front the Russian president, which is a rough move, a tackle in Australian football. But then during the opening ceremony, we, see, we saw the both, uh, both leaders shake their hands and uh, smile to each other in a, quite a friendly atmosphere. And according to uh, uh, President Putin, 
Mr. Abbott uh, made an impression of uh, quite a uh, great uh, uh, moderator. He said that he had created uh, a productive atmosphere for these meetings and even joked about uh, the Australian Prime Minister letting Putin to go home early because he needed to, uh, to work on Monday. I have to get to work on Monday. It takes nine hours to get from here to Vladivostok and nine more on top of that to Moscow. I explained this to Tony. He was very understanding. So the general understanding is that uh, despite all of the uh, Cold War era rhetoric that we've been seeing broadcast by many uh, media prior to the summit, so the meetings were held in a calm atmosphere and friendly atmosphere, at least that's according to uh, the, pro the, the Russian president. Let's hope this uh, will become a tendency which will go on to solving uh, the problems that uh, world leaders were discussing here in Brisbane. Igor Piskunov there at the G20 summit. And as the uh, G20 winds down, hopefully you can find a way to stay cool there in the blazing temperatures in Brisbane, Australia. Now, Ukraine was not on the official agenda of the summit, but it became the main focus of meetings on the sidelines. Many experts say that only conclusive dialogue within the G20 and not pressure tactics will bring positive change. I think it was important that Mr Putin came to Brisbane so that he could speak with those who are his critics. Uh, there seems to be a disagreement as to the, the impact that the sanctions are having. Of course, they, they tend to be very focused on, on individuals and I, I actually think it's a reflection of the frustration that, that some in the West feel about the, the situation that exists in, in Ukraine and, and clearly uh, quite a few people in, in Europe and certainly the United States and here in Australia uh, believe that uh, Mr. Putin has the capacity, or the Russian government has the capacity to influence the direction of events in, uh, in eastern uh, Ukraine. What's been happening and rising geopolitical tensions, what's been happening in Ukraine, that is not positive for growth. In fact, the IMF, when it revised down its forecast for the global economy, said that one of the uh, reasons it revised down the forecast was because of rising geopolitical tension, and this isn't conducive to investment, isn't conducive to uncertainty. We do need to have more dialogue, we do need to have more of a focus on it to try and resolve the issue. Because the bottom line is that everyone would be better off to the extent that we can see some resolution, better off for the people in Ukraine for, to see some reduction in the tensions there, but better off for the global economy. And one thing that completely stole the spotlight at the summit was this photo of President Putin and Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott holding koalas. Now, we heard the president talk about how they uh, had an affable relationship, but social media still went crazy discussing how this goes with Abbott's previous vow to shirt front his Russian counterpart, which is a rough tackle in Australian football. Now, some have been tweeting that the prime minister must have delegated that slight to the animals. Others made up their minds over what kind of man of his word Tony Abbott is. And there was also some sort of a pun challenge on Twitter as well. While some guessed that what was taken for a threat to Putin was actually a Russian word for a group koala hug. Kind of cute. Now, the G20 would not be the G20 without a security lockdown, but some of the measures seemed a little bit overboard, even for such a high-profile event. Let's take a look. Now, weapons, of course, are obviously a big no-no, even medieval ones like swords or bows and arrows. And don't carry eggs either at the G20. They're now listed as possible projectiles. Same goes for a bag of flour. If you've got one of these, well, you are now officially armed with a paint bomb. And the gathering is not a place for insects or reptiles either. That's fine for me. Kind of creepy. Spiders and turtles among those on the blacklist. And then remote-controlled cars, well, they're prohibited as well. These may look like harmless toys, but in the G20 world, they are stealth attack weapons. And finally... While Australia might be a great place to surf or sail, you have to wait until the summit is over. Any boats or surfboards are strictly forbidden around the venue. Now, the big issues of the G20 summit are being discussed on Twitter as well. For many users, the international leaders themselves were the main topic. Russian President Vladimir Putin was the most discussed figure, with over 44,000 posts made about him. He was closely followed by the Chinese leader, who collected almost 40,000 tweets. Other leaders in the top five include the president of Mexico, French leader Francois Hollande, and U.S. President Barack Obama.